one NASA center passing the baton to another and is really NASA at its best and most collaborative. You know, this mission exemplifies that collaboration is what leads us into a new era of exploration. And this is the era of sample science. This is when sample science really begins. OSIRIS-REx took aim at some of the biggest questions in exploration and science. You know, how did our solar system form and how did life originate on Earth? It can't get more exciting than that. Uh, we can't answer these kinds of science questions without fantastic engineering. And I'm really proud of the team at Goddard, at Lockheed Martin, and at the University of Arizona that oversaw the mission for more than a decade. It's really scientists and engineers coming together in order to make our scientific dreams come true. It was exciting to be in Utah just uh, a few weeks ago and seeing the moment that the capsule hit the desert floor uh, after seven years in space. It was an exciting moment to see, but really the real journey begins now. Uh, it's worth remembering that you know, this team accomplished uh, almost the impossible here, um, and we were able to, you know, from the from the maybe back of the envelope, uh, science ideas of what OSIRIS-REx could possibly do, all the way through to conceptualizing this amazing mission, building it, testing it, launching it, going to the asteroid, taking the sample, coming back to Earth, landing in Utah, and now here at home at Johnson Space Center. Um, this is the, the smallest uh, body we've ever orbited before. Um, at one point, it was orbiting only uh, a radius of six-tenths of a mile. I mean, that's just walking distance. So it's really uh, a brand new era for us at NASA, and it's the first time that the United States has brought a sample back from space and landed it safely on Earth. We've been able to map uh, the entire surface of Bennu in detail uh, to find the safest and, safest and best landing site, and it's really helped us understand understand these kinds of asteroids uh, in more detail. But now, of course, we are going to be looking in detail for the first time at these samples. So we're at the point uh, where we you know, have justified all of the really hard work. And again, we're handing the baton off to the really world-class sample facility here at Johnson Space Center. So I want to give a round of applause to Johnson here. So you hear today that our scientists are incredibly eager to get at the samples. I know that there are Goddard scientists of, as well who are waiting for uh, their small piece of the sample. Um, so over the next months and years, we're all going to be definitely rewriting some history. Uh, when we do, I want all of the team members um, and their families to really recognize that the revelations uh, that we are going to make here are standing on the shoulders of the incredible engineering and science that you've all delivered. Um, thank you and enjoy today. Thank you, Dr. Lightstrom. Johnson Space Center is best known as the home to the astronaut corps and NASA's human spaceflight program. It's also home to the Astro Materials Research and Exploration Science Division, or ARIES. Its mission is to combine scientific and engineering expertise in order to advance human space exploration, to integrate terrestrial and planetary research, and to promote successful space missions by mitigating risk. NASA has the world's leading sample scientists and creates the most extensive collection of ex extraterrestrial materials on Earth, which includes lunar samples from our Apollo missions, cosmic dust, solar wind particles, meteorites, microparticle impacts, the JAXA-led Hayabusa and Hayabusa 2 asteroid samples, and now OSIRIS-REx and the, sam the samples we collected from asteroid Bennu. Our team has been caring for the OSIRIS-REx sample and its contents since it arrived in Houston on September 25th. Now let's hear from a crucial member of the team. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Eileen Stansberry, Chief Scientist at NASA's Johnson Space Center. Thank you. I'm honored to be here celebrating with you all today and representing science at JSC. 
This sample return mission is an important part of an integrated planetary exploration strategy answering fundamental questions on the formation and evolution of our solar system. The pristine sample material from Bennu represents a valuable resource providing a window into the earlier, early solar system and is the newest addition to NASA's astromaterials collections. Our role in astromaterials curation is to catalog and safely contain received samples. The process for deintegration and curation for OSIRIS-REx has been thoroughly planned and practiced with the mission science team. Opening the science canister and methodically removing TAGSAM revealed an abundance of sample from asteroid Bennu, and even though the TAGSAM head is not yet open. With this abundance, we're taking our time methodically processing to properly care for every valuable piece of Bennu. And with the overflow of sample found on the avionics deck spilling out of the TAGSAM, we have plenty to show you today. The science obtained during the mission so far, coupled with the samples we're only now getting a glimpse of, are just the beginning of the wealth of knowledge that we can expect from OSIRIS-REx. Sample return missions are unique. They provide for large sample uh, science return using advanced instrumentation that you cannot fly on a spacecraft. Analysis is not limited by the ideas formed years ago when the missions were first conceived, and measurements can be made and cross-compared using different techniques to resolve unexpected or ambiguous results. The samples are then available for new questions, new techniques, new instrumentation far into the future, and they are the gift that keeps on giving. I'm proud of the stewardship that we commit to these samples as we begin this next phase of the mission with sample curation and scientific analysis, celebrating the legacy that the OSIRIS-REx mission is providing to current and future generations of scientists. Let's take a look at the people and labs that are working with our newest astromaterials, the OSIRIS-REx samples of Bennu. The OSIRIS-REx mission was a spacecraft that launched in 2016 to collect asteroid samples from the carbonaceous asteroid Bennu. And a carbonaceous asteroid means it's a likely storage for prebiotic compounds, so organic compounds that could have been the building blocks for life on Earth and potentially other places in our solar system. And some of these samples may even have remnants from before the solar system, pre-solar grains that allow us to study the raw material that made ours and other planets. With us bringing this particular asteroid back, this is some of the most pristine material of asteroid sample that we have in our current collections. The Astromaterials Research and Exploration Science Division, or the ARIES Division, is a division within NASA that focuses on the study and preservation of rocks from space. This is a group of a really diverse range of scientists and engineers that are exploring our solar system through studying samples, developing things like lunar simulants, being part of NASA missions that range from the exploration of Mars, including the Curiosity and Perseverance rover, supporting the Artemis missions, as well as OSIRIS-REx. We have meteorites that fall onto Earth. They are altered by the Earth's atmosphere. They have been exposed to Earth's chemical compositions. They are contaminated samples. And in our curation labs, we carefully work on samples in clean rooms, nitrogen atmosphere glove boxes that protect the samples from Earth's atmosphere, oxygen, and humidity. You don't want to study us on samples. You want to study the actual samples in its original state. And so prestinity within curation is very important, and we go to great lengths to make that happen. Every time we do that kind of probing investigation, we learn something new about the nature of the universe and ourselves. Three. Two, one. I feel like humans, since the beginning of time, have always been explorers. We have not stayed in one place. We have ventured out to various continents, and eventually that was going to happen with planets or asteroid bodies. 
whether it's Artemis or Mars. Everything we've learned on OSIRIS-REx is going to further our knowledge and our technology development for the next set of missions that we have coming up. These samples are here on Earth for future generations. 50 years from now, we can be studying these with instruments we couldn't have imagined before. So I think that's one of the most important aspects of this mission is bringing the samples back. We've waited for seven years, and now we can reveal what's inside. Next up is someone who leads, needs little introduction. He leads our agency and keeps a close eye on our efforts across the solar system. Please join me in welcoming NASA Administrator, Senator Bill Netson. Hey everybody, it's days like this that continue to amaze me. And what we do in this little agency, it's all amazing. I'm going back to the Cape this afternoon because we're launching a billion dollar spacecraft all the way beyond Mars, closer to Jupiter. And it's gonna snuggle up next to a metallic asteroid. And we're gonna learn something about that metallic asteroid. I hope we might find diamonds and rubies on that <laughs> asteroid. But it's a reflection of our country, our can-do spirit. America is defined by possibilities. And we've always been a nation that is restless unless we're pressing the unknown. For 65 years of NASA's existence, and this is our birthday, NASA has responded to America's call. And the story of this little agency is the story of technologies transformed, of barriers broken, of making the impossible possible. And so through missions like what will be Psyche, the one lifting off tomorrow, or Perseverance, the rover that is running around on Mars and digging samples in our search for life there, or the little helicopter that's now flown upwards of 60 times we just wanted to see if a helicopter could fly in a 1% atmosphere. It's flown 60 times. If it's the James Webb Space Telescope, look at the discoveries. We are going to have answers to questions that we don't even know what the questions are now. Everything is a new discovery as we are glimpsing the early part of the development of this magnificent thing called the universe. And now, Osiris Rex. And it's giving us a glimpse into what lies beyond. So seven years, almost four billion miles of a journey throughout the solar system to the asteroid Bennu, now back in OSIRIS-REx, the sample return capsule landed in Utah, right on the money. It was a picture-perfect mission. It's a feat of engineering, and it's NASA's first ever sample from an asteroid. So, you ready to see the results of the mission? Take a peek. So the first analysis 
shows samples that contain abundant water in the form of hydrated clay minerals, and they contain carbon, and you could see the carbon there, as both minerals and organic molecules. And at nearly 5% carbon by weight, carbon being the central element of life, a far exceeding our goal of 60 grams. This is the biggest carbon-rich asteroid sample ever returned to Earth. Carbon and water are molecules. The carbon and water molecules are exactly the kinds of material that we wanted to find. They are crucial elements in the formation of our own planet. And they're going to help us determine the origin of elements